let's talk about Huntington disease. So Huntington disease is caused by a trinucleotide repeat expansion of CAG in the Huntington gene or HTT gene on chromosome 4. There is a unique feature of trinucleotide repeat expansion diseases called anticipation where successive generations will have an increase in that trinucleotide repeat. So for example, a father could have 40 repeats and the daughter could have 50 repeats. More CAG repeats means that the disease will present earlier and with more severity and can progress faster as well. There's full penetrance, meaning a full expression of the phenotype at 40 or more repeats, and 28 or fewer repeats is considered normal. There's a gray zone in the mid to upper 30s where you can have incomplete penetrance. The inheritance is autosomal dominant, and in fact most patients with genetic testing confirmed Huntington do, do have a family history. So the main pathologic manifestation is diffuse caudate and putamen atrophy. The main clinical feature of Huntington disease is chorea. And chorea is a brief involuntary non-stereotyped movements in the face, limbs, and torso, kind of random movements. About half of patients are actually unaware that they're having the chorea. It may blend in with the normal movements that they're having. Other features can include hypotonia with hyperreflexia, as well as motor impersistence, meaning that they cannot sustain an action for a long period of time, such as tongue protrusion. There can also be dystonia, as well as a progressive loss of voluntary motor function, which eventually later on can look Parkinsonian, like a akinetic rigidity. There can also be impaired eye saccades with preservation of smooth pursuit, as well as abnormal optokinetic nystagmus. Unfortunately, the disease does carry a higher burden of depression, as well as suicidal ideation and psychosis. There tends to be a progressive decline in executive function. Weight loss and cachexia are fairly common. And the juvenile onset form can have a few different features, with seizures being one of them. So sometimes you'll be tested on the imaging features of Huntington disease. So first, the MRI brain will show caudate atrophy which can precede clinical symptoms by 10 to 20 years. So here on this uh, MRI, we see a normal sized caudate and it typically bulges into the ventricle, a convex shape. However, in Huntington disease, there can be caudate thinning and decreased volume and that can result in the ventricle looking more like a, a line or a concave shape. PET scan can also show abnormal metabolism in the caudate. So the diagnosis is confirmed by a DNA testing, and you can see 36 or more CAG trinucleotide repeats in the Huntington gene. This combined with the clinical features gives you a diagnosis of Huntington disease. A family history is not required. Now there are a family of diseases which can mimic Huntington, so if the testing for the Huntington gene is negative, then you can proceed to test C9-ORF72, as well as spinocerebellar ataxia type 17. These are the two next most common diseases. For the treatment of Huntington disease, there is no specific disease-modifying therapy, however, Physical therapy and occupational therapy in a multidisciplinary setting can improve walking and balance. Speech therapy is useful for dysphagia and dysarthria. For symptom relief of chorea, you can use tetrabenazine and dutetrabenazine. These are VMAT2 inhibitors or dopamine depleters. 
The major contraindication though, however, is depression. Unfortunately, depression is fairly common in Huntington disease. So in patients that do have depression, you can use antipsychotics uh, with second generation antipsychotics being preferred over first generation. The other psychiatric symptoms should be treated as well. And specifically for depression and anxiety, you'll want to be careful when using SSRIs with the VMAT2 inhibitors since the SSRIs are sometimes CYP2 inhibitors. For prognosis, most patients will eventually require significant help with daily activities and then will become bedridden. So the average survival from clinical onset is only 10 to 20 years, so these patients do die early. And there is also an increased risk of suicide in Huntington disease.